Buddy Coffee. Hey, I'm talking. Oh, okay. sorry. We're going to start with a song and then we'll introduce our guest and get back to our topic. Let me introduce you guys to our special guest tonight. This is Dr. Dan Deems, a new member of our pastor and shepherd team as of this afternoon, actually. Dan's part of Grace Life, and uh, he's a doctor. 
Uh, you're semi-retired doctor, right? I so, am semi-retired. So you, you're not practicing anymore, so what are you doing now? So I'm working on a uh, national preventive health plan, and it kind of falls right into all the challenges we're having with COVID. We're focused on things, whole body health and wellness, mm. trying to fix stuff before they go wrong. You know, Al, you could really listen to this and pay attention. What? <laughs> I just saw him flying a minute ago on a chair. I yeah, it was in, in, the, in, the, in the pre thing. I'm getting my planking in there. So we're going to be talking to Dan. We're going to be asking him some questions, uh, some questions about the challenges that we face with COVID-19, some of the opportunities, and then what to look for when we reopen. Al, do you have any questions you're going to ask him? or? So they greet each other with a holy kiss. How's that going to happen? Yeah, that's not going to work into this new thing. <laughs> that's going to be a difficult one. Yeah. That's gonna well, be I was never going to let you greet me with a kiss anyway. Right, well, we Especially, know. now it's a great excuse. So I'm uh, I'm going to start asking some gotcha questions because I am. Like, oh, some gotcha questions. I'm the, I am the Grace Life Live fake news. <laughs> I like it. I'm, just I'm properly so, socially distancing from these guys, of course. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but there's a reason yes. for that. So, Dan, as a doctor, just give us a little bit of thought. I know you and I have had some discussions, but... I don't think a lot of people recognize how much life, particularly ministry, church is going to change. What are some of the challenges you see going forward? Being a doctor and understanding a little bit more of this than some of us might, some of the data you looked at, some of the things you've read, what are some of the things in your mind that you think are some of the top challenges that we're going to face? Well, I think the, the hardest thing is humans, you know, the human touch is the most important thing. And they, they, we're built to understand speech. We've been listening to songs and hearing words for really over 60,000 years. It's kind of hardwired in our brain. And to not be together and, and not being able to give each other an emotional hug mm -hmm. uh, is unbelievably important. It's soul food that mm -hmm. we need. And how long we're, are we going to feel comfortable before we're able to give each other a hug and sit close together and, and hold hands in fellowship? And, that, and we have to find ways to overcome that and transition ourselves back. <coughs> But will it ever get back to the way it was? Well, then you also think about, you know, you're also a businessman. Uh, and I know that uh, the economic realities of what's going to be hitting churches is, is, is something real, right? I mean, it, it's very true. You know, individuals come and, uh, to service, and, and it's important for tithes and offerings. Uh, all churches need to run that way. But if someone's not there, you know, will they give in the same capacity? That's one of the things that, you know, you, you know you've set up. Grace life to overcome that long before Corona ever came. You, know, you, you. It's almost like you saw the future. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe in, in luck. I, you know, my, my wife Rhonda and I, and Rhonda's a smart one. Yes, she is. <laughs> she is. You know, we don't believe in luck, uh, and I believe it happened for a reason to really set it up. How can churches uh, make do? And, and without the encumbrances of an actual facility, that's helpful for Grace Life. Very helpful. And you know, the idea of not having any full-time staff and all those things, it helped us to be nimble and mobile and quick quick to move. But um, I also see some ministries that churches have always done that are completely different. You and I have had a little bit of discussion. Man, children's ministry. What? How? What? How are we supposed to? What are we supposed to? I, 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 Jen, you were talking about Dr. Gillespie. And she runs, she's kind of our organizational shepherd, but she also built from scratch this amazing grace like kids ministry we have and i'm not even in charge of it and i'm worried about what it looks like for them and you know like do i need to buy 20 thermometers do i you know that's right i don't know it's just going to be a hard one right it is it's going to be a very difficult transitional time you know how do we uh, uh bring kids in there in any children's program how do they then integrate with our congregation the adults and the children and and how do you socially distance children yeah. and and then one other <laughs> complex one other that. complex step you know for children they've been walk, locked in their houses not being active you remember growing up the only way you listen no, to a teacher actually, was to get out for pe and run around and burn off your energy and then you can sit down and listen how are we going to do that you know i saw a video clip about three weeks ago of two kids running down the street and they hug each other now and everybody thought, oh, that was cute. I guess the new cute video will be when they run down and they keep each other six feet apart. You know, that's yes. adorable. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's not adorable. How do you keep? Right. Not, how do you keep kids from hugging? And so th this is part of a challenge that we're going to have. And and but I also think so. That's the negative part, right? But right. there's also some some amazing opportunities 
as a church. We talked a little bit with a guy named Brian Yost a few weeks ago about this. But uh, from your perspective, what do you see as some opportunities that you're excited about? Well, I see the, the great opportunity for us to find a tra transitional program uh, back into the, the uh, church and in a very logical way, you know, basically following kind of federal and state and local guidelines, but and, and really, you know, having Jen's uh, organizational skills to really bring us back. But then what are the opportunities for us to uh, reach out? You know, you're in 22 states and four countries. 28 and four, yeah. 28 and four, and, and so now your message. <laughs> who's counting? Yeah, <laughs> who's counting? Apparently I am. Wait, I just heard uh, 29. 29, there we go. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, the opportunity to, to spread this word because it gets back to the concept of soul food. We, we need to be together as humans. We need to be together as our species. So, okay, so I know we haven't really, you know, gotten into specifics about that, but the, the, the kids thing, you know, one of the big attractions to any church and any, anybody who's at, as the kids' ministry, yeah. kids ministry is very important because oh, yeah. people want, I mean, I know that uh, people who aren't quote unquote religious, they don't want to go to school, but they want to send their kids to Sunday school. So I think it's, it's, it's interesting and important to, to you know, us, for us all to figure that out and be in one accord and then let everybody know, I guess, you know, but right. um, yeah, it's so. Are, are, you know, there, I don't know that there's been any CDC guidelines for the for kids, except for just close right. the schools, right? Right. There really hasn't been, and it's it's interesting as a as a parent. You remember, it, it's really nice to be able to listen to your message, and you can bring your kids over, and, and yeah. they're in a great place to congregate. And we'll have to figure out that transitional time, but we're thinking way ahead because that's how you designed it a long time ago. And so we're I think we're poised and ready <coughs> to do that. Well. I feel like another couple of the opportunities <coughs> that have present themselves, obviously, I think this is going to force churches to become much more efficient. You know, I was talking to a couple pastor friends of mine about two weeks ago, and they were asking the question, what do you think is going to be some of the things we should, we should think about? And I said, you know, one of the things we're considering is the possibility is that operational costs just for sanitation is going to go up 30% just cleaning everything constantly all the time right. and the supplies and the labor that takes to clean it. I mean, that's an example. We're gonna have right. to, so that, well, that's not an opportunity. Um, it does help you begin to think about a way. I think churches have a tremendous opportunity to make people feel safe, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. right? Not just with the gospel, but with how we share shepherd people. And I, I've seen some churches, and we're gonna talk about this in a minute, but I've seen some churches that opened up too soon and they got derided for it. Uh, I was telling my the shepherd team last week. I don't want to be the first church to open up, but I also don't want to be the last. Right? That's <laughs> you right. know what I mean? I don't want to be the last. So it's, right. all, it's a hard balance, right? And so all of us as pastors in Sarasota, we're all looking at each other. Oh, when are you going to go? Oh, I don't know. When are you going to go? And we're like, well, you go first. No, I don't want to go first. You go first. And so it's kind of been interesting to see. Right. We, we laugh about it, but I think we're just going to vote on one particular pastor to go first. And we're going to storm out there to the wolves and let it. <laughs> is that the scene from Jaws when the yeah. family goes out in the water? And yes, gets... yes, yes. That's what it is. So, but uh, we're, we're going to talk business. We're going to talk some more in just a minute about some of the plans that we're putting together and some of the things we should look for. Some specifics. What I want to do is we're going to talk about letting people know what they can look for when we first start to scale. And, and it's going to be a slow scale. It's not going to be all of a sudden one Sunday we're all back at McCurdy's Comedy Club and the Mac Jenner Building is full. It's not going to be that way. Right. Uh, it could be that way legally. We could do that if we wanted to, but that wouldn't be the. But not prudently. <laughs> prudent wouldn't be loving people. Listen, I would love to be back this Sunday. You know, the I think as of today, the administration said that churches are considered uh, essential, which I think they are. But even with that, I'm not ready to go full bore yet. We just don't know enough, right? Would you say that? Right, and I, I think in general, people don't feel comfortable yet. I think about. When are we going to feel comfortable just looking someone in the eye and shaking their hand? And it's an odd time, and we'll, it, that will dissipate over time. You know, we start to recognize that, you know, this is not unlike, uh, in many ways, other pandemics we've had even since 1918. So we'll be able to look back and, and apply some logic to it. But we, you know, uh, the congregation wants to feel comfortable coming here. And you, you'll file, follow those real uh, strict guidelines and use what the community is using as a general rule. You know, on the positive side, I was thinking about something the other day. I keep seeing these co comparisons to the 1918 Spanish influenza. Uh, they had a big spike and the second spike and everything. 
And everybody tried to see and say, well, it's because same is going to happen here. But we have a lot better technology today. We have a lot better communication. I mean, everybody knows everything. I mean, everybody's a doctor on Facebook, it seems like, you know? That's but true. my point is, it's a whole different ball game with this one, right? Even though, it is. because Spanish flu is very, uh, I don't know how contagious it was compared to COVID, but this is a, if you had to pick a time to have a pandemic, this would be the time, right? Well, it's true. Everyone's on social media, and you're right. Everybody has access to knowledge immediately, and you watch any of the medical journals, and they're rapidly putting out great research in a period of just a couple, three months. That never would have been seen yeah. 100 years ago, yeah. 50 years ago, even 10 years ago. And, and what's even more interesting than that is we have the opportunity to, to look at this internationally and look at different countries and how they responded. And for instance, uh, Sweden's results and look at them versus Italy, etc. And you get those in for those data you can get almost immediately. Well, one more question we're going to do with a song in a minute, but what are some of the top maybe the top one or two um, myths that you've seen out there about COVID-19. Like, I heard the one where, like, if you sneeze really hard, it would go 25 feet. And so it's not six feet social distance. You have to be 25 right. feet away. And I'm OK with keeping out 25 feet away, but I don't want you to be 25 feet away. So I, what? I, I think that this the surface uh, uh, exposure to Oh, you mean virus. transfer from surface? Right. I, mean, I think that's probably the most important. But if you, if you think about it, you know, if you ever watch a uh, like watch a TV show wants a surgeon, uh, you know, clean his or her hands, and you watch it done exceptionally well. But those gloves get thrown away, you know. And and so one of the things that you want to do, you, you know, you want to uh, clean your hands. You want to get rid of your gloves, and you know, probably the virion stick less to your hands than they to a rubber surface. But virus particles don't like to live outside of a body, so they're not going to sit around for days and days. And so that has. I saw uh, that one too. It lives nine days on a table or something. That, that's it, it's almost impossible. That's what I thought too. So I mean, I can't even live nine days on a table. How the virus? <laughs> I saw Alf Lane a minute ago yeah, on a yeah. table. Yeah, he did. All right, we're gonna do another song. This one actually, I got a ton of requests out that people wanted you. You did I Am Redeemed right. a few weeks ago, right. and everybody said, "Can you have Al do it again?" And I said, "No." And they said, "Well, then you're fired." Huh. I said, "Okay, fine. He'll do it again." So you're gonna do uh, Redeemed. I'm gonna do it. Wait a second. Let's bit. get this straight. So if I don't do the song, I'm out. You're fired. And your pastor out. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't work very well. Yeah, 
chains wipe away every stain. I'm not who I used to be because I don't have to be the old man inside of me. This day is long dead and gone. I got a new name, a new life. I'm not the same, and a hope that will carry me home. So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away everything. I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed, set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away everything. I'm not who I used to be. Oh God, I'm not who I used to be. Jesus, I'm not who I used to be. I am real. Oh, thank God. I will do one more at the end, but let's talk a few minutes now, Doc, about some of the things that people can be prepared for. What I don't want to have happen is they come to church and they expect it to be the same experience it was beforehand. And while I, while I want that, I just don't think it's prudent yet, right? Would you agree, agree. with that? I agree. So what are some of the precautions? And we're, we're having a discussion as a pastor and shepherd team. We're you know, consulting with you and some other people that I know. Just tell us some of the things that people should be ready for that are going to be different. Like, for example, when they at the end of the service, when they come out to try to hug me, what's going to happen to them? They're going to kick you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some things we should expect? Come on, you know, I, I think uh, <laughs> the way to think about it, the way we're trying to put it together, is think about it in three phases or four phases and, and really uh, uh, transition the space between each other and uh, uh, trying to uh, help those individuals who are at the greatest risk, because that's why Florida's done yeah. so well, yeah. really paying attention to those. You think Florida's done well? They've done it exceptionally like it. well. It seems like And it. I'll digress for a second. You know, the Villages, you know, is this iconic retirement group. Yeah, up in, biggest in the, in the country, right? And, you know, when COVID uh, struck, everyone assumed that they would be crushed. And they have some of the best results in the country. In fact, UF, sorry, I mentioned UF. Yeah, it's okay. I'm an old. It's okay. <laughs> um, you have uh, sent a whole team of researchers to study why uh, the individuals at the villages have done so exceptionally well. Mm. And, and it has to do with uh, lifestyle and, and health and a variety of other things. So paying attention to those data and making sure that we're using some sort of a social distancing model and helping our most uh, at risk stay away and then transitioning the space mm. so that uh, uh, you know, we'll get closer and closer, and then probably the last thing will be the touch, the actual close, you know, handshake, and I don't know when we're going to get back to hugging you. But that's I know. one of the things I miss I the know. most. Me too. I, I miss, <laughs> I, I, I digress another for a second. I've been away, uh, uh, yeah. you know, for a, I help, I, my, my brother's problem, and I was able to experience the soul food of uh, Grace <clears throat> Life mm. from 3,000 miles away. Mm. Uh, so thank you. Mm. Now, when I, when I think about what can people can expect, is it true that you can almost look at outside like hand sanitizer in some ways, like, right? especially in our heat? Right. And no one quite understands that concept yet, but it probably the, the, the combination of heat and humidity are one of the reasons we've, we've done well. Um, and then the outside is, <coughs> out, you know, outside in the open air, out in the Gulf, it's probably one of the best things you can do. You know, COVID exists in our, our lungs and in our nose and in our eyes. When you go swim in the Gulf, it all goes away. I shouldn't say all, but you, you know, when you're out and spacious and in open air spaces. So that's one of the key things as we transition, finding ways to uh, utilize outdoor space and openness. Because if you think about things as a cubic foot, how much air space, like you were mentioning earlier yeah. about the airplane. 
that concept. You might just want to repeat that. Just well, that I read that of circulation. It, every 45 seconds, all the air in an airplane cabin is completely recycled and sanitized because of the HEPA filters. Right. It might be one of the safest places on the planet right now. It's kind of great. And the airports are empty, so. <laughs> so I think it'll be really important to understand our overall airspace and how uh, much the air moves and not having too many people all at once. And then transition us back in uh, really how the defense and the state really want us to do in separate phases with a really logical plan. And, and, and uh, Dr. Genji's really thinking about interesting ways to create the right organizational tool so it's safe but gets us back to the soul food that we need. And so it wouldn't be surprising if some people have an opportunity to worship in an outdoor setting where we're streaming on a big screen TV Maybe even people that are more vulnerable. We got fans, we got canopies, or something like that. So that might be an option. That, that seems we'll, that makes complete sense. And then that way you have some people inside, right? Some people outside, some people here, maybe some people in another place. And so, uh, you know, trust me. I, I hope by August we're all back together on a Sunday morning, and that, that's going to be lit. That last, that first service, we're all back together. Right. But we're not going to. We're, we're not going to have flash pots and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to wait for that. Right, right, and because we do need to see each other. Like you said, you've said like four times that you came, man, Joe, it's really good to see you. Because I haven't seen, I haven't seen you for three months, right? It's it's pretty crazy, right? Mm -hmm. When I came in, I thought it was like a mirage. I saw these yeah. guys, it's great. <laughs> Those are people. Down. Those are real people. <laughs> so, um, Al, would, do you have anything else you want to? Oh, I would have caught you if it fell down, but it, I couldn't. I was you know, too far away. <laughs> Sorry, dude. No, I just think it's interesting that, uh, you know, maybe we could even have a, th a thing set up to where we could just do like a small, Bluetooth broadcast while it's some people who need to because it's, if, if it's hot out you know maybe you have a, a Bluetooth broadcast for people under cars you know it's very interesting that you say that now um, you need to stay tuned because in the next week or two uh -huh. we're gonna be rolling out some ideas that we're working we're not ready to roll them out yet because we have to work out some details rolling but, but there's some really exciting things that we're thinking about that there are opportunities that are unique to Grace Life because of the way we're set up with our mobile. Right, right, right. That we're going to be able to do some things that um, it's not as good as being together, right. but it's going to be pretty darn good and I'm yeah, excited yeah. about it. So you'll hear that. Right. Um, but, you know, it's not going to be Bluetooth Why not? per se. Well, because not, not everybody knows how to operate Bluetooth, Al. I, have, you, I, have you seen... If I can do it. That's a good point. That's a good I point. think it's going to be much better than Bluetooth. Okay. Yeah, but it, it'll be a, a fun transition. Uh, and you know, Joe, you, you set us up to, to be prepared for this and to use a variety of locations well, you, and everything. You know, you've said it a couple times, and I'll just say that, that the way that Grace Life has set up the structure, it was born out of two things. A, we wanted to start a church with no money, <laughs> so that was the first thing. But B, I have another organization called Mobile Preacher. And Mobile Preacher is designed on being a ministry that is not confined, not just by structures, but, but tradition, nothing wrong with tradition. I embrace tradition wherever it benefits, mm -hmm. but wherever it doesn't, I'll, I'll go ahead and reject it. Now, I'll never violate or reject scripture or truth. But so Grace Life's, Grace Life's model was born out of necessity, but also out of uh, a passion to do things in a way that, that uh, didn't have to be pigeon held into one particular mindset. And I will say one more thing. I, I sent a letter, an email to the Shepherd team this week. It was an article about the coming pastoral crash. Right. About how pastors are doing things they have no training for. And they're talking about how the first month when something like this happens, it's exciting because you're thinking new ideas of ministry. But after about a month, it gets old. And pastors start to run on fumes and they, and they start struggling and then the finances come and then the church is struggling with that. And I was just thinking, and this is to my Grace Life family, I see that in some of my pastoral friends, but man, I don't feel that at all because we have just amazing people. Like Al, you've taken time out of your life to be here on Fridays to do this Grace Life TV. Dan, what you're doing, you know, what's the life. you've talked about Jen. We have an amazing pastoral shepherd team. We have an amazing congregation that has been so resilient and so willing. You know, Jen, she is an organizational genius. Mm -hmm. And for somebody like that to work with a guy like me, who moves at speed of light. You know what I'm saying? Right. That, that takes a special. <laughs> That's right. She's figured out how to put the uh, the bumpers up in the bowling alley so that you yeah, can, she the does. bowling ball only can go so far. <laughs> That's not That's not. All. I do have one thing. Yeah. Um, what's, what's with the bucks at? 
This is an old school Bucks hat. I think I bought this when Sam Weish became the coach. That was Sam Weish before Tony Dungy. And uh, this is before they went on their super, their playoff run. And I just, you know. You're, you're expecting him to do something this, this year, aren't you? I, I am, because my favorite player of all time, Tom uh, Brady, go I've ahead. always loved him. I know you have. <laughs> I've never joked about him during sermons or anything. So <laughs> not at all. But yeah, this is, this is, this is definitely a statement. Okay, all right, just making sure. We're gonna do one more song. It's a hymn, Nothing But The Blood. And we'll sign off tonight. Dan, it's been awesome having you. It's been great being here. Thanks for inviting me. Soul food. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What
We might not see you next week, but we might see you the week after. Stay tuned for announcements, and we love you, Grace Life family, and all those tuning in from other places in the country. This thing will be replayed at 8 o'clock on YouTube. Thanks, guys. Love you. Out. Love you. Cut it, Crasco.